Hi, this is Erika Kassab from Small Robot Studio. Today I'm going to show you how to use alphas in Nomad Sculpt and how to create your own, either painting them or from your own sculpts. In 3D sculpting, an alpha is a black and white square image that acts as an intensity map. Any area in black means zero intensity, so it will be ignored, and the areas in white will apply an operation at full intensity. Let me show you an example to put this in context. I'm going to use the move brush with normal active. Right now I do not have an alpha selected. If I tap here, I have the first option, which is just a white image. There is no difference in intensity there. So the whole circumference of the brush is being used to pull or push the surface. However, when I turn around, I can see that that is not necessarily true because the center of the circle is pulling with more intensity. Why is this if I don't have an alpha selected? The intensity of a brush may come from two places. When I open the stroke menu, I have on the top alpha, but if I scroll down a bit, I have fall off. And you'll appreciate that this graph looks the same as what we have created here. I can change the shape of this curve to drive a different intensity. But today I do not want any variation, so I'm gonna choose the flat line. Now when I pull or push the surface, the intensity is exactly the same in the whole circumference of the brush. Now that we have this out of the way, let me scroll back up to alpha. I'm gonna tap on this square to open up the available alphas. By default, Nomad comes with only two alphas, which you see here at the top, but you can tap the plus button and import any black and white image that you want. I'm gonna choose my star, and don't forget, white will be full intensity, black will be ignored. So now the brush works applying that shape. If my alpha has tons of gray, then the intensity will decrease the closer these tones get to black. You can apply an alpha to pretty much any brush. However, the brush that you'll be using the most with alphas is the stamp brush. This brush works by tapping and dragging. And like its name says, it will stamp whatever alpha I have selected. By default, the intensity of the brush is going to be fixed and the size will change depending on how much I drag it. If I open the stroke menu and scroll down to stroke type, I can reverse this. So now the size will always be the same, but the more I drag it, the more intense it will be. If I wish to change the constant value, all I need to do is to use my side sliders. Alphas are useful for a number of things, like sculpting repetitive detail, such as the skin pores or rivets. But hold your horses, before getting too excited adding all sorts of details, I recommend applying a layer to your mesh. Simply open the layered menu and tap on Add Layer. This will allow me to control the intensity of the detail that I create if I type on these three dots, I can even increase it more or reverse it completely. The delete layer brush is going to let me erase the surface details without affecting my original base. Alphas are also useful if I want to mask or isolate specific areas. For instance, if I wanted to do a screw head, first I need to have a bit of resolution for my mask to look good. I need my mask brush. And I could try to do this by hand, but it's gonna take a while and it's never gonna be that precise. If instead I go to the stroke menu, select the alpha with the shape that I want, scroll down into stroke type and choose grab dynamic radius. In this case, I want symmetry off. I can simply drag and apply the shape. There's a bit of fall off happening on the edges, so I'll go back to the stroke menu and I'll change the fall off to the straight line. So it's constant and there is no blurring in the edges. Now I can easily shape this however way I want. The higher the resolution of your mesh, the less pixelation you'll see happening in the shape. 
Another use is creating stencils for painting our sculpts. Just like before, you're gonna need a mesh with high resolution, otherwise the paint is gonna look pixelated. Similar to the mask brush, select the paint brush, open the strokes menu, select the alpha of your choice, scroll down and select a different stroke type, either grab dynamic radius or dynamic intensity. Make sure the falloff is flat. In the paint menu, select the color that you want and tap and drag to apply it. And yet another use is to create a specific effects on our brushes. I'll keep using the paint brush, but I'm gonna tap once on it and reset it to go back to the original. Yet again, on the stroke menu, I'm gonna choose a dotty alpha. Now when I paint with it, it gives me a spray-like effect. These effects can be really useful when sculpting. You might have noticed that the clay brush by default creates a lot of texture. This is because it has a square alpha applied to it. When sculpting hair, I achieve nicer results when my brushes have a triangle alpha. In this case, I'm using a modified version of the crease brush. When applying alphas to brushes like clay or crease, you might find that the stamping of the brush is too visible. To reduce this effect, first in the stroke menu, lower the stroke spacing. 1% will give us better results, but the brush may start to lag because it's performance heavy. Now bring the stroke smoothing value up. It's already much better. But the speed in which you sculpt also matters. The slowest you go, the cleanest it's gonna look. To help you keep control, use the Lazy Rope Stabilizer. The last thing to look at is the resolution of your mesh. The highest, the more it's gonna pick the tiniest details in texture. Find the right resolution for the size of the detail you are creating. This is one of the reasons why I love to use multi-resolution. And don't be afraid to experiment. I find myself constantly changing these values to achieve the best results. There is not a perfect formula. Before showing you how to create your own alphas, I want to take a moment to thank this group of amazing people who supports the channel via Patreon. You folks are the best. Thank you so, so much. All our Patreon supporters gain access to a growing library of assets, including the alphas I created for this video. Learn more about it at patreon.com slash smallrobotstudio. Alright, let's carry on. Creating your own alphas is very easy in apps like Procreate or Infinite Painter. You'll need to start with a square file. 1024 is a good size for high definition. If you want to go higher, then I recommend 2048. Start with a black background and paint anything you want in white. Tools like the Symmetry Assist can be very useful. Alphas are square images, but no matte brushes are circular. So I like to create a circular guide as big as the canvas and keep whatever I paint inside the circle to avoid any cutoff. It is possible, however, to adjust the size of the alpha inside Nomad. I also recommend using the Gush and Blur to get soft edges and avoid anti-aliasing or pixelated effects in Nomad. You don't need a high value, just enough to make the edge soft. Finally, if you're creating directional brushes with a distinct base and tip, like the hairbrush, I like to keep a round blurry base because when sculpting curves, those bottom corners can once again lead to visible stamping. When you're happy with it, turn off the circle guide, save it as a JPEG, and load it into Nomad with the plus icon. I love Procreate, but if you want to create alphas of seamless patterns, the superior tool is Infinite Painter. I won't go into detail on every step because that requires a tutorial on its own, but you can see in this time lapse how natural it allows me to create complex infinite patterns. On export, I'll get only the base style like this one. Now let me show you how to set up your brush in Nomad. First with the pattern following the stroke of your brush. I'm gonna tap twice on my clay brush and create a clone. The new brush is gonna be all the way to the bottom. If you tap, hold and drag, you can move it to any location you want. Now I'm gonna open the pressure menu. First I'm gonna deactivate, use global settings, 
so these are unique to only this brush and are not shared with the others. I'm gonna turn off radius and intensity so these values are always and constant and they don't change with my stylus. Now in the stroke menu I'm gonna choose my alpha. Below where it says styling I'm gonna set this to 4. These numbers might need to be adjusted on a case by case scenario. I'm gonna scroll down to fall off, tap on the curve and choose one of the ones that have a flat top but have a nice transition to the sides. Now here is the tricky part. I'm gonna bring the stroke spacing number up and give myself a little bit of lazy rope stabilizer. Let's test how this works. There's a bit of a gap between the stamps so I'm gonna reduce this number and try again. Perfect, I like how this looks. One last thing, I'm gonna turn off a cumulative stroke and I'm very happy with how this turned out. Again, you'll need to play with the values and experiment, especially stroke spacing, laser rope stabilizer and detailing. Unfortunately, there's not a perfect formula. Now, to create a brush that tiles in all directions, I'm gonna go back to the alpha section on the method I'm gonna select screen project which automatically will bring tiling Y to repeat. Now when I apply my brush it tiles in all directions. The only problem with this method is that it applies the alpha based on the screen. If the surface is not pointed at my screen the result is gonna look distorted. The same applies for round surfaces. On the areas pointing away to the camera there will be a visible distort. And the last thing I want to show you is how to turn their sculpts into 3D alphas. I'm gonna start with a box and making sure that I'm working with perspective off. Place on top any sculpt that you want. The box will be the deepest part. Let's tap the view cube so this is facing perfectly on the front and I'm gonna tap again and hold to lock this view. I'm gonna zoom and make it as big as possible here in my screen. Now I'm gonna open the interface menu and the second tab debug and I'm gonna choose hide map. Now the whole screen is gonna turn dark and you may or may not see something. What you gotta do now is tap on the box area to tell Nomad that this is the deepest area, the area that is gonna be painted black and after that is gonna turn this into the corresponding values of the alpha. You can experiment what happens if you tap on different areas. This looks good, now I'm gonna open the display settings menu and I'm gonna bring the render resolution up. I'm gonna open the project menu and scroll down to render. I'm gonna choose a custom size and make this maybe 1920 by 1920. And I'm gonna export the PNG. I'm gonna go back once again to the interface menu and turn off and once again export but now with transparent background on. On a Procreate file I'm gonna add these two images and if you're wondering why, well, you'll see here that they are not centered to the square. I'm gonna select both images and use the resize tool to place it where I want it. Now this render was just for reference because I cannot see things very well here, but I don't need it anymore. I can now save this image. Now I can use my new beautiful alpha to apply this detail. You can even create the reference for a tileable pattern in Infinite Painter, bring it into Nomad and use it to create a 3D version. These tools are pretty cool. But at this point in version 1.65 the functionality is still relatively new and it's on an experimental stage. The renders create visible bending. It may not look like it at first but when I apply a curve in Procreate then it becomes really evident. But you will definitely see some staircasing happening if you try to apply this alphas on a big scale and with really high resolution meshes. If you're only creating a small detail and subtle texture, this will work fine. The alphas that I have made available for Patreon supporters do not have these problems because I generated them with higher resolution in ZBrush. Let's not forget that Nomad is in active development. 
If enough people request this feature to be improved, I'm sure that extra attention will be put into it. Anyway, I hope you find this alpha techniques useful. I'll see you soon in a new video. Happy sculpting! That's it for this tutorial. If you find it useful, make sure that you leave a like so other people can find it. And if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe, as we are bringing out CG and illustration tutorials every week. Become a patron and access tutorial assets, bonus content, a private discord and more by clicking in the link below.